What's good boy dudes and boy dudes? and today I've got a slightly different anime review. Since well, now that I have completed Beyblade Burst Evolution and I'm starting to watch Beyblade Burst Turbo and literally the new Beyblade Burst Season 4 anime is coming out next month, I decided let's kind of celebrate on my accomplishment of trying to complete this show and look back at all the Beyblade openings. Yes. Every last one of those damn openings, including the Japanese openings. I want to rank all the Beyblade theme songs from the worst to the best. Uh, but boy, dude, you want to react to every single Beyblade opening? Well, yes, even the Bay Wheel series as well. I just kind of want to look back and be like, well, what's the best opening? Like, because the opening, the theme songs, they are literally how we are introduced to the a TV show or a film series, you know. When we see that theme song, we instantly can judge, okay, what's this show about? What's the story gonna be like? Especially the Japanese openings, they're like mini trailers, unlike the entire seasons. So, um, I'm going to try and briefly um, talk about why I like this certain opening. I'll talk about the good and the bad and my overall opinion about it. Like I usually do on my Boy Do channel, um it's gonna be quite a long video and um, there's a lot so without further apu here is all 22 beyblade opening theme songs ranked from the worst to the best video essay before i talk about this video there will be some spoilers um yeah there's gonna be a lot of spoilers in here because the theme songs especially the japanese ones have a lot of spoilers in so be warned about that and try not to get offended if your favorite isn't on the top spot and also i may not if i don't explain too much that's because dude i had to review a ton of these theme songs and yeah it's gonna if i don't explain too much um just comment down below and give me some feedback on it you know tell me what i missed out so let's get on with the countdown. At number 22 or 21, I have no idea. At number 21, and in my opinion, the worst Beyblade theme song is definitely the Bay Warriors Cyborg theme song. This theme literally has a really crappy like dubstep um soundtrack to it i mean even the visuals i mean you think okay the song is but it's a bit bad do the visuals help it in any way heck no L looking at the animation in it the cgi looks so bland and boring it just looks really boring and stale and the characters just kind of sit and stand there they don't really do much and they just have these kind of shots of the characters just posing and it just kind of like it's it kind of faded in the background they just kind of like they pushed back and it looks really boring it's not selling me it's not it's not encouraging me to watch it it looks so boring and generic to be honest with you um i will say the dubstep theme song is way too fast paced and upbeat for the slow paced visuals of the theme song just looking at it i mean I feel like they could have really edited it and cut it better, you know. But I just feel like it's the animation. It looks really crap. And I have to admit, I haven't seen this show yet. So I don't know what it's about. And I don't know if this is literally the style they wanted to go with. But I'm just judging on what I've seen. And this theme song is not that good. Um, uh, it's definitely the worst in my opinion. Number 20. Shogun Steel's theme song was pretty, pretty, pretty rubbish. Um, honestly, I don't like the rap. I don't like anything about this theme song. I suppose, suppose maybe, maybe it has like certain good images, you know. Like the bit with Sakyo like um, pointing towards the audience was cool and then Ronan Dragoon exploding. Um, I will say it does have some interesting animation like clips, but it's kind of your average smut, you know. Um, I forgot to include this in my main review, and I like I like how it started off with the Shogun Steel theme song, but overall, okay. Number twenty. 
And number 20, it's the Bay Wheels theme song. Now, okay, this, mo this movie, sorry, this theme song is a lot better than the Bay Warriors Cyborg. And it is the first season in the Bay Warriors Wheels kind of trilogy in a way. It's the first one. And this show, oh, I need to do a review of this show, but I can talk about the theme song. So obviously we know that this show was created to fit in the 13 episode gap of Metal Fury because the show was cut short so they just made this show just to fill in that gap and give um, Bailey fans something to watch before Metal Fury comes out and I have my opinions on Bay Wheels, Ugh, I got mixed opinions but I will do a review of all the seasons in due course but let's talk about the theme song. This theme is very off, however I will admit this, I'll put my hands up and say this. I do like the instrumental of the song, you know. I don't know, it kind of reminds me of a Need for Speed game, you know. It does have that Need for Speed feel to it, you know. It reminds me of when I was like playing Need for Speed and you hear those like the music in the background. It has that feel and it's a bit ironic considering how this is a show designed on like wheels and Need for Speed cars, wheels. You get me? Yeah, 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 yeah. Anyway, um, if this theme song didn't have any singing, I think it would be pretty decent. But the singing is so bad and it's way out of time and it distracts you from the theme song. Um, I will give the theme song credit on how they approach all the characters. Um, despite the characters all kind of like being like shown like for a little bit i kind of like how we see like the poses of some of these characters like i love how the this blue guy i don't know what his name is he poses like i think he does kung fu or karate so we know that's him and then you have this really large guy who's just kind of like boom like the way he just launches his bay it's kind of like really flamboyant in a way and then you have the girl who's very elegant and sophisticated the way she launches it and you instantly know what these characters are like and their personalities based on those like you know poses so yeah i'll definitely give personality personality i'll definitely give it props to it you know and it does have some nice animation especially the horse pegasus against this like i don't know what that thing is but it's done okay i suppose it's just that i think i've seen it better number 19 so at number 19, we've got the Beyblade Burst Japanese um, theme song. And this is the first season of the Beyblade Burst series. And it's the first opening of the Japanese one. And it's pretty much the first time we're seeing Beyblade for the first time on the screen since Shogun Steel. And does it do a good job to sell it? Well, let's take a look at it. So obviously it just shows Vol and his like classmates and him just being a goofball and him just running around you know with his friends and it does show like you know what's happening like Vol getting Valtriac and him awakening Valtriac and some of the great battles that they have and um, personally I just feel like the visuals are just too so I don't know why but I feel like I need to punch something like there just needs to be more of a punch to this theme song but and there isn't and i'm waiting for that punch but there isn't a punch at all in the slightest because the visuals happen so slowly and i think because i'm so used to the english theme song where they kind of speed up the visuals to um have it in time with the theme song as well as you know saving time because you know it just feels too slow and too long for me and doesn't have that punch in a way and uh, I will say the, whatchamacallit, the soundtrack, the song, it, it's very kiddie, you know, your typical children Japanese theme song, it, there's no real style or flair to it, you know, but I just prefer this theme song a lot more than the Bay Wheels and Cyborg theme song. So yeah, with that said, let's go on to number 18. So at number 18, we've got the Beyblade V4 Season 2 Japanese second opening, Jet, written by Hiroma Mori and Takashi Genzazuno, Fairy Foal, and performed by Fairy Foal. And I have to admit, this, it does have a much better song than the previous um, entries on this list. And I don't know, it has this very like early 2000s Japanese song, you know, that 
you would hear in that time period, you know. And I do have to admit, it does work with the um, style of the um, opening. But honestly, there's not much to the opening. It just shows you the main characters like Kai, Ray, Max, just kind of bouncing around, showing their base. But the best part I love is when Tyson is like gripping his launcher and then you have all of his friends coming side by side sliding. And honestly, there's not real much to like. I will say the best part of the theme song is definitely when Team, what were they called? Blade Breakers, I think? When they're like all in like these four different panels, letting it rip, and then you cut to all their bays in different poses, kind of like spinning. It does look pretty cool, I have to admit, you know. Uh, but honestly, there's not much to the first version of this opening, in my opinion. I kind of feel like the sec, I, I don't know, like it's just not much to this one, you know, not much at all. I, I don't really like this theme song. And with that said, we're going to go to the opening one. And before I continue, I have to admit, I did get these two out of order. Um, I said that opening two of the V4 series was at number 18 and 17 is the opening one. I got that confused. Opening two is number 17 and opening one is number 18. So let's talk about opening one. And... The problem with opening one that I have, just looking at this opening, the song is terrible. Okay, Off The Chain is written by Verbal, and Flo and Giorgio, Delighted Mint and performed by Toss and Turn. This theme really has this early R&B track to it and it basically shows Tyson running towards his bit beast, showing off his dragon bay. Then we see other characters spinning their bays towards them in a really corny fashion. I mean, look how corny that looks. It just looks so tacky and not that great at all. And then we have freeze frames of the characters and their bass just kind of spinning and they just kind of like stop in that pose for a long time. And it looks kind of stupid. I mean, look how stupid Ray looks. He's like, look at my dragoon, not dragoon, Drago Bay. I don't know, it just, they look kind of stupid when they just kind of pose like that, you know. And there's not much in this theme at all in any slightest. You can tell that this theme was used for the first half of V-Force as, as I spoke in my Beyblade um, old versus new video that V-Force was entirely filler content and they didn't cover much of the manga until the last 13 episodes with the national tournament not the world tournament I don't know why in the dub they called it the world tournament it's the national Tyson isn't a three time world champion he's a two time it was original and G-Ref not V-Force so I just to that out of my sister um, so yeah, just like V-Force, this theme song is bland and forgettable, and it's not one I will listen to again. At number 16, we have got Beyblade Season 1, Fighting Spirits, the first opening. So this, is, this theme song has the vibe of the late 90s of openings. I mean, it does remind me of like, kind of like, old school anime of the time. And it really reminds me of the original Pokemon theme at times, like the beat of the song and just that funkiness to it, that old jazz. The song was written by Masuto Yamada and performed by System B. And um, what do I like about it? I mean, the stuff in the theme song is, some of it is done well, like, um, what can I talk about? The title Fighting Spirits is a nod to the Bit Beasts, which in a way represents Fighting Spirit of the Blader and their bay. The visuals aren't really that depressing, however. Aren't depressing. They aren't that impressive. I need to get my words right. Better not talk fast. They're just kind of still shots, like, especially this one. Like, that's not interesting. That's not going to get me excited. It kind of looks a bit boring. It's just kind of like the characters just standing around. Just, you know, not doing much and it just shows the bass spinning and it just looks really boring. I mean, they could have made it look more interesting. It just looks really, I don't know, kind of dumb to be honest with you. Not that great at all. And looking at the visuals, they look shite. Like compared to like the continuation of this show. Not very good at all. Um, 
So despite its classic funky 90s beat, this does not hold the candle to other theme songs in the slightest. I'll give this one a skip. Now, number 15, we've got the Beyblade Burst Japanese theme song. This is the second season of the Beyblade Burst series. And the song, although pretty nice and catchy, doesn't match to the slow paced visuals, you know. The visuals, I would say a lot of it is used in the Beyblade Burst Evolution theme song. Um, I do recognize a lot of the um, visuals and the shots they used. Um, but I don't know, I don't think it works. Like some of these shots are really slow or just hold on for too long. And personally, I feel like the English did it better in terms of the editing. Um, honestly, the song, uh, I don't know what it's called. I just call it Burst Evolution. Um, it's, mm, I suppose it's upbeat and funky, but again, the visuals, until we come towards the end of this theme song when Volt is battling with Valtrek, that's when it kind of like the adrenaline does come in and kick in. But it's not that great as well, to be honest. I'll give this one a skip as well. And number 15, we got the Beyblade V Force the movie or Beyblade Fierce Battle the movie theme song, Victoria. Now, this theme was used for the movie and there's not really much to talk about it because we don't have visuals for it for me to show off. Um, I would just say that the song is pretty nice. It's got a funk to it. It's got this nice rock, you know, list to it. <laughs> um, it does kind of remind me of Green Day and Foo Fighters at times. Um, and it's very bassy as well. I would have loved to have seen the visuals being edited to it. So. I just, I ranked it really high just because I love this song, you know, and it's, it's pretty damn catchy. And number 14, what do we have? Sorry, 13, we have got, it's the Baby Burst Turbo Japanese theme song. Uh, this one, it's kind of um, lively, I'd say. Um, I will say the visuals look much better in this one. Um, uh, I mean it has what's his face flying around his bay and I do like this shot with like um, showing this guy at his bay you know and in a way I don't know like the way they shot it he looks kind of scary and evil and I don't know too much about this season because I've just started it but episode 2 the dad of what's this guy's name um, I'll just call him I'll just call him Zed the main character of Zed, um, literally his father did tell him that he was worried that the bay may, you know, start to take control of him or something like that. So maybe that's what's going to happen in this season and it foreshadows that in this way. Um, we do see a lot of um, characters in it, but it's shown very briefly and they seem to be like singing to the theme song. Uh, indicating that this is going to be more of a light-hearted series, you know, the fact that they're really, like, chilled out. And there's not many, I don't think there's really any villains in this film song, you know, so far, apart from um, Nui at the end. So I'm not too sure what's going to happen, to be honest with you. Um, I just like some of the visuals, you know, and some of, like, the cinematography, you know, like Zed running through the green doorway and got this character who's looking kind of like, you know, mean, something's gonna happen, I know it, I can feel it in my bones, but, and overall, it's a pretty good theme. <laughs> At number 12, you've got Beyblade Zero G. Yuki returns to sing the theme song for Zero G, and the song is kind of a hybrid of Metal Fury and Metal Masters. It kind of does remind me a little bit more of Metal Masters, you know, in a way, and um, some of like the instrumental and some of the visuals done in it is pretty cool. Um, I kind of like the interesting color borders of the main characters in it, like the way they just kind of like move. And it's great to see some of our older characters like Tsubasa and Adoka and Benke as well. And I kind of like the shot with Zero running towards Jenga and then Jenga's back, you know, the stars blowing in the wind. That's done pretty well. Um, but honestly, it's kind of a 
bland looking theme song. There's not really much to it, you know. Just I kind of just like the song, you know. Um, the opening part is definitely the best, I would say. Um, showing the Zero G logo in that really funky um, vibe. They want to like show you that this is for, meant for a new generation of bladers, and it's like meant to just get you, you know, excited. It, it's really buzzy looking at it, and I kind of like seeing. Um, what's his face? Um, Zero Kurigane, you know, get his bay all launched up, get his ripcord in, turn in the bay, and then as he prepares, like, you have fire, like, surrounding him, showing that this guy is fueled with, like, the Blade of Spirit, and he is determined to battle no matter what happens. And the song, eh, compared to other songs, it's a bit disappointing. It's not the best, but it's better than some others, I'd say. At number 11, we have got the Baby Metal Saga theme song, Season 1, 2 and 3, Metal Fusion, Metal Masters and Metal Fury. Now, the main three theme song for all three of these themes have this kind of mellow rock vibe to it, um, playing in the background. Every season they would change the words Metal Fusion to Metal Masters, Metal Fury, and I suppose it's to remind the audience that this is a new um, theme song, a new season. Um, I can't. I, there's no point in like reviewing all of them. Um, Metal Fury's like, I would say out of all of them, Metal Fusion has the better editing. I freaking love the start with Jingo like flipping his launcher, getting Pegasus ready, and then letting it rip, and then we have the Pegasus signal go boom. And I, I don't know, like the timing of this theme song is done so well, like with Pegasus like spinning and then clashing all the bass and with the words face off, like I don't know, the, the cling cling matches with the face off, I don't know, just it's matched really well, really really well, um, I don't know what else in the theme song stands out, and um, maybe the bit where Jing uh, goes, when the singer goes power and then you have the Pegasus logo like booming in the background, it's showing Jingus reaching out for Pegasus full power and potential, fighting off, you know, whatever. And my favourite part of the theme song is definitely the bit where Kyoyo and Benke are about to battle and it goes, psh, psh, you know, to the song, let's go Beyblade, like that bit, it's just, the editing is done so well at that bit. Um, Metal Mang, um, then you saw Jingo like ripping Pegasus and then you have the explosion happening, that's done pretty well. But then this bit with, um, oh, which bit is it? I don't know, the bit with Madoka's going, let's go Metal Masters, it's a bit like, are they, are they really having the characters trying to sing to the theme song? It's done a bit stupid, ones are about attacking um, Gangan Galaxy, symbolising their battle against Gangan Galaxy, and it does look pretty cool. And it just show it just shows everyone like really pummels like the board, like saying let's begin the world tournament. It's like eh. I feel like some of these shots are kind of forced in, you know. Metal Fury is much better, I'd say. Like I freaking love how it starts off with Ryuga and Jingo like battling, flying in the air. That's that really is like whoa. This is gonna be a cool show. And it, it, it freaking like starts off with you thinking, right, well, you're going to have a big battle. Eh, that's not really what's going to happen. It's kind of false advertising right there. But I will say the visuals are cut a little better. Um, I love the bit where Ryuga grabs his hand and the song goes, bring on. That That's cut well. A lot of it, yeah, the visuals are pretty cool, you know. Yeah, I would say the visuals are a little better. The ending does kind of fall flat, you know. After they go, Fury! It's like, eh. It's like they don't know what to do, you know, with it. And they just kind of like put a lot of clips. And it ends with Yuki for some reason. I don't know why Yuki's the final character in the shot. It's usually Jinga or Pegasus who are who ends like the um, theme song, but it's Yuki. Uh, I don't know why they did that, but I have my theories. Yuki is the boy who brought the legendary bladers together in a way. He's the one who went up to Jinga and told them, hey, Nemesis is gonna destroy the world. We need to band together. And if it wasn't for him, um, the bladers wouldn't be together. So in a way, he is the glue to everyone. So I suppose that's my little theory on it.